Ever wondered how someone can give you a loan of such an amount when they don't even know you? Also, how do they decide the interest and tenor of this loan? Sure, you might think it's just about your credit score, but is that enough? These apps are using a ton of data to figure out if you are eligible and even how much they should offer you. Because the less defaults they have, the more profitable they will get. To research for this video, we also spoke with PMs of two different loan apps who gave us some extremely mind-blowing insights. Just to give you an idea, they said that some of these loan apps have AI models which analyze the KYC video call. And it's not just to look at you, but also the background of your call to see how affluent you appear. You will be surprised to know the amount of data these apps have and the extent to which they go before offering you a loan. Instead of wasting any more time, let's get into the video and find out more. So this message of you getting pre-approved for a loan is not just random luck. The loan app has already been collecting data on you. The first check with these loan apps do is they pull your credit reports from credit bureaus like Sybil. They get some basic information like your credit worthiness from these bureaus. But that's not all. They also tap into the account aggregator system. This account aggregator system is an initiative by RBI. Currently, it consists of 8 banks and their users. The moment a loan app requests the account aggregator for your info, they will have your transaction details ranging from a payment of Rs 18 for an ultra mild cigarette to your local pawn shop to the EMI of your home loan. But here is the thing, only 8 banks are currently a part of this system. So just a limited number of users are covered. It's growing, but not everyone's data is in there yet. So how do these loan apps figure out the rest? They do this by asking for SMS and mail access. Yup, they read those bank messages and mails to track your spending habits. They can figure out how much you are earning, where you are spending, and more all through your text notifications. So even if your bank is not part of the account aggregator system, they can still track your other bank accounts that you didn't even declare. They are able to access all of your spending patterns and then offer or reject a loan based on them. Now, this is about when you are pre-approved for a loan. How about when you apply for a loan via any of the various loan apps out there? This is where things get really interesting. The app will ask for a bunch of permissions like location, IMEI, gallery, call logs and contacts and even your app data. First up is location access. This isn't just to track where you are. For example, they use location to see if your area is blacklisted. Kind of like how Amazon would not deliver to areas known for scamming COD owners or with a high number of returns. Loan apps avoid giving out loans in areas with high default rates. They are also checking to see if there is anything shady going on. There might be a single person sitting somewhere and applying for different loans from the same location. And one of the most interesting things which I found out was that they also check if they have collection agents in the area from which the loan is getting applied from. If they can't send someone to collect on the loan if things go south, guess what? You are probably not getting that loan. Next up, they also check your phone's IMEI number to see if multiple accounts are running on the same device. This helps them detect if one person is trying to scam the system with multiple loan applications. They access your gallery to check whether the names of your pictures match with those of any other accounts in their system. Because if they do, then probably the user is trying to apply for the loan from different accounts on the same device. Interesting, isn't it? Not every app does this, but call logs and contacts are accessed by some apps to reach out to your contacts in case of a default and harass you through them. Most of the loan apps scan your phone to see what apps you have got installed. Got a gambling app like Dream11? That might lower your chances of approval or get you a loan with much higher interest rate. If you have multiple loan apps installed on your phone, that might be a cause of rejection too. Because the more loan apps you have installed, the more desperate you seem. And if you spend too much time on them or gambling apps, that's another red flag. But how do they know how much time I spend on each app? Oh, that? They have app analytics access for that too, where they can check how much time I have spent on each app, including Instagram and various social media apps. And if you thought that was it, no, it gets deeper. Loan apps might even keep an eye on your major life events like getting married or having a baby. They can track this through your browser history or even your shopping habits. Yeah, your online purchases might just give away more than you think. Wait, wait, there is more. These apps don't just stop at your transactions. They also look at your behavior. They will even check your social media to build a profile of your spending habits. Are you someone who likes to go out to fancy dinners and take frequent vacations? That could make you seem more likely to default on your loan. From checking how your new SIM card is, 
to verify whether you have been involved in any kind of criminal activity or not by accessing records of crime bureaus these apps do whatever it takes to underwrite them against defaults okay so now the loan has been dispersed you think the tracking stops right actually not loan apps keep tabs on you even after you get the money they will monitor your sms email for bank balance updates if they see your bank balance dropping and an EMI payment is due, they will hit you with notifications and calls from their collection agents. And it's not just about EMIs. If you make a big purchase, like buying a new fridge right after missing a payment, they will know. They are still tracking everything. Some of these apps even install a small package on your phone to record your screen. These recordings are then stored by these apps and used in the case the user has defaulted. So as you can see, loan apps in India are gathering a lot more data than just your credit score. They are tracking everything from your location to your social media habits and even your app usage. It's important to be aware of what data you are giving up and how it's being used by them. Make sure to always check the permissions these apps ask for and be mindful of your digital footprint. And with that, we have come to the end of this episode of Scale by iTried. Thank you for watching and if you found this video eye-opening, hit that like button and subscribe for more insights. See you in the next one.